Should TikTok be banned? I got some buddies that have been telling me a little bit about that, you know, delete it and whatnot. Honestly, I think if you have an iPhone and you're worried about security threats, throw away your iPhone. I think the Chinese, they're trying to do various things with our kids. I deleted it for a while. I, I downloaded it back. Uh, Why? They, they throw up all the things I want to see. Uh, that's a little scary. TikTok. It's the app that keeps teenagers glued to their phones more than any other. And you believe it's Chinese propaganda? Yes, I do believe that. Used by more than a billion people around the world, the controversial Chinese video platform has become a battleground in the new Cold War between Washington and Beijing. TikTok is really, at a very basic level, TV that watches you. Well, I think it should be banned in the free world, period. One state has decided to take decisive action. Our friends in the UK do not understand or they are downplaying the threat of communist China right now. But with American children increasingly hooked on TikTok, will they succeed in getting it pulled from the App Store? Montana, set to become the first US state to ban TikTok in 2024, I went there to find out why. And to speak to the TikTokers who are fighting to keep their favorite app available. To find out more about TikTok and its content, I met with Michael Senger, an author who has highlighted Chinese propaganda around the coronavirus pandemic. This is my wife, Adia, my little baby, Sophia. Do you view TikTok as part of a, a sort of weapon in this cold war between the United States and China? I do, yeah. And I agree with that viewpoint that TikTok is essentially a kind of Trojan horse, that it just wraps itself up as just a normal app, just like any other tech company. And really, the reason they want the world to adopt a Chinese-owned app above any other is because of the Chinese Communist Party's influence on that company. It is how I really kind of made my name on Twitter is with these big threads about, you know, Chinese influence on the response to COVID. Really sort of the world's very first impressions of the response to COVID were largely shaped by these viral videos that went viral all over the world. People just falling to their deaths and, you know, dead bodies lying around everywhere across Wuhan, you know, hospitals just slammed with all these bodies of comatose or uh, dead Wuhan residents. And where were these videos being posted? These were being posted really all over social media. I mean, these were mega viral. And, you know, for the years to come, people would cite, you know, this was what happened. Like, this was what they actually believed to be the reality. These videos was very soon and uh, months after proven to be completely fake. And of course, we know that because nothing like this happened anywhere else in the world. I mean, this is all complete nonsense. And you believe it's Chinese propaganda? Yes, I do believe that. And it's one of the clips of, you know, a Wuhan resident supposedly suddenly dying, uh, falling to the desk. But this particular clip uh, <laughs> became I mean, it's, infamous it's because the guy, I mean, it's just terrible acting. It's, uh, you know, this is like the World Wrestling Federation. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just the guy is just clearly throwing his arms out. And it was distributed, um, most of these videos came through TikTok which we know there's a big controversy. Is TikTok a normal app? You know, representatives of TikTok, a lot of people on the left will say that TikTok is just a normal private company, you know, no, not up to anything suspicious. And that is bizarre because if you talk to many people, and these are, you know, credible sources, even CNN is aware of this news, about what the Chinese Communist Party is actually doing with TikTok because the owner of ByteDance is a Chinese company. There are mountains of evidence that they're using it to harvest data, to spy on users. You have another uh, one of these videos that went viral right here. <laughs> where, and you can see the absurdity of it. So you have these police officers and they have the word SWAT and they're written on their uniforms in English. So this is clearly for international consumption. These guys, you know, they're supposedly stopping this guy and oh, he takes his mask off. So they're catching him with a butterfly net. And these guys all have SWAT on their uniform in English. This is the type of video that was going viral back in early 2020. So you basically see this lockdown or, or the West copying China's lockdowns as an example of how TikTok can influence policy decisions, can influence the public's views on certain things. This is like a concrete example of that. Uh, I do, yes. So you've, you've got a lovely, beautiful 10-month-old 10 10 daughter. 
um, yes, sir. who we can see over here. And, uh, you know, she'll be growing up in the next, you know, 10, 15 years to be a teenager. And lots of teenagers in America have TikTok. Do you yep. think that, you know, you'll let her have access to that app? Uh, no, absolutely not. No, I will not be letting my daughter use TikTok. And, you know, hopefully it'll be banned by then. Though Montana is far away from Silicon Valley, the state is also home to its fair share of TikTok influencers. To find out what they thought about having their app taken away, I met Andy Austin, a native Montanan photographer and adventurer who, by sharing simple snapshots of his everyday life, has amassed a sizable following on the platform. So we're here in the most beautiful place in Montana, is that right? In the world, in my opinion. In the world, okay. Yeah. I grew up in these mountains and the prairies and the hills and I picked up TikTok and downloaded the app in 2020 during the pandemic when we were all in lockdown as a simple way to pass the time and something to do and I live in a beautiful place and it turns out people really wanted to see that and they liked looking at what I was doing and they liked looking at videos of Montana. If one thinks of TikTok, you have an image in your mind of basically people in the city, generally people in cities who are big, these kind of big TikTok stars. Maybe you've got even got a TikTok house in LA or something like that. There's an account on Twitter called Libs of TikTok. I don't know if you've ever That's seen it, that. Yeah. And you've got teachers and sort of far left activists making these really strange videos which children are seeing. And there are some concerns about that. So not everyone on TikTok is obviously like that because you're sort of, you're bucking that trend. Do you? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of Montanans that buck that trend. I have a lot of friends here in Montana that are ranchers that are on TikTok and they're explaining why regenerative ranching is the answer to things like climate change and things like that. Um, so there is there is so many different perspectives on TikTok and that's actually why I came to like TikTok a lot more than I thought I was going to. I personally love World War II history and I can't tell you how much I, World War II history I've learned just scrolling through this app. It's just fascinating. So TikTok is really good at figuring out what you like and then showing it to you. Now, obviously, the main concern that legislators have come up with in terms of their reasoning behind banning TikTok in Montana is the security threat. And this is a Chinese app. This is a Chinese owned app by ByteDance, the Chinese company. And it's collecting a lot of data from Americans' phones and all people all over the world, I guess. So you're not concerned about the data that they're collecting on your phone, for example? I am concerned. Um, I actually think that I'm concerned about it. I'm also concerned about Instagram and Facebook and Meta's collection of data, which is just as bad. But the issue is far greater than once again, TikTok getting the scapegoat for this, China getting the scapegoat for this. You have Google that does the same thing. You have Facebook that does the same thing. Instagram does the same thing. And I'm not saying that's okay. If the United States wants to solve this issue, it's not banning a single app. I mean, you're just, you're, you're stomping out a, a, you know, a little fire right next to you while there's a forest fire burning it behind you, right? I suppose the difference between the big the sort of Silicon Valley companies, Facebook, Instagram, Google, they're all American companies. And the argument is that China is a real national security threat to the West and has sort of pernicious uh, motivations compared to these American companies. How, how would you respond to that? I don't disagree with banning TikTok on government phones because of a direct link. But you have the average citizen on their personal device. We don't have state secrets. I'm not overly worried about you know, China selling off state secrets off my phone. So you're not concerned as a TikToker that the app is going to be banned. You're, you're basically going to be fine, you think? Yeah, there is a concern. What, what happens if it does go through and what happens if this is implementable and I lose access to 130,000 people? And, you know, that's not great. You know, you're, you're restricting business owners in the state of Montana. And, you know, that's not something I'm super happy with. I was struck by Andy's appeal to libertarian arguments against the ban. But at the same time, I wondered if they were simply an attempt to win over the voters of a red state, suspicious of big government. And in reality, he just didn't want to give up on an app that has brought him influence across the world and help him maintain a lifestyle most people could only dream of. To give me a taste of Montana, Andy took me to a rodeo in Bozeman, where I met his friend and fellow TikToker, Jeremy. So Jeremy, you've just finished the rodeo. How did it go? The bull ride didn't last very long. I got bucked off, but uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. And 
I entered in uh, team roping tonight as an event, and I was healing, which you catch the uh, rope with the calves' back legs. Is this an example of your TikTok content, of you at the rodeo, basically? Yes. Later tonight, I'll probably post some videos, uh, just me uh, having fun, uh, enjoying life, and uh, having the camaraderie with the rest of the guys. So the governor says that TikTok is a national security threat. So what do you say to that argument? I'm be honest, I'm not that big into politics or government stuff. Yeah, there was a this balloon that came across even Montana here. Um, I think we should have shot it down right away as it entered our airspace. I do have family that has served in the military, so I am very strict on that term, that I love our military and I'm, I respect them. And I think they should have shot that balloon down right away um, until they let it get to the East Coast. Uh, but the TikTok and owned by a Chinese government and agency and stuff like that, I really don't think on it that way. They're supposed to be our friends, not our enemy. My next stop was in Billings, Montana's largest city, where I met Kylie Nelson, another TikToker who is not happy about the ban. I'm like nervous having you're really, to do you're this heart pumping. in front of people. <laughs> But you do it in front of hundreds of thousands. I know, but it's just me. First up, we got Swoon. We got some of this last week, the sugar-free iced tea. So this is your life? This is literally my life. <laughs> I share it all. Um, not just with the fashion and the PR and the unboxings and everything, but I also share, like, I have a podcast, and so my podcast, I really share, like, my life experiences. Is there anything in you that thinks I'm a little bit addicted to this? Yeah, 100%. Like, even, for example, right now, um, I told my agency that I just, like, need a break, so I'm actually not posting at all Wednesday through Sunday, so for five days, and I find myself being like, oh, I need to share this, but I'm like, no, you're taking some time off right now to not post. The American government says mm -hmm. that China is a, is a serious threat, and mm -hmm. in particular, TikTok is part of that sort of weapon in this new Cold War between America and China. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the Chinese government say that actually, no, it's, you know, we're not, we're not a threat, we're fine, you know, we're just a normal company. Mm -hmm. I mean, which side do you kind of put yourself on? That's where, again, it's so hard where I, again, am first to admit that I'm not overly educated in all of that. So I have a hard time. I mean, it's like this is the country that I live in. So I think it would be like a big red flag if they were wanting to take away all our platforms. And that's where I could see like the freedom and speech and all of that kind of getting brought up. But then also TikTok has come out and they're offering, is it like a $1.5 billion security plan called Project Texas, where they're like, hey, we'll store all of the American data over here in Texas, in the US, overran by an American team. So it's like America is coming out and saying, this is like our problems or these are our concerns. But then I feel like China's also coming back and saying, okay, we're hearing your concerns, so here's a solution for it. So I feel like if somebody was actually like, a threat that they wouldn't try to be a solution base. But also, again, I, I don't know like, a whole lot behind all of it too, so. How concerned are you about the ban actually happening? I'm not concerned at all. <laughs> I'm not. Um, from my understanding, again, of just conversations that I've had is that people are saying that it's not gonna get surpassed with the Supreme Court. So they think that the Supreme Court's just gonna put a pause to it and that nothing's gonna come from it. Whilst the ban has split some conservatives in Montana, many support the governor's decision. One example is Aaron Flint, a talk radio host and a veteran who I caught up with during one of his radio shows. Now that pistol brace, Joe Biden, he's got a pistol brace on this camera. Biden's gonna make that illegal here. Uh, he's gonna turn you into a felon. If you got a brace on a camera like that. Are you guys really from the UK dangerous. Telegraph? We're really from the London Daily Telegraph. Ah, yeah, the, the London, London Daily, Daily Telegraph. Telegraph. Throw the headset on. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. please do, we love the accent, man. That, yeah. that, what is your name, sir? Stephen, nice to meet you. Stephen. Hey, Aaron Flint, yeah, good hey, to how's meet you. Yeah. So what are you doing in town? So we're here from the Daily Telegraph, as you mentioned, to make some films in Montana about the state banning TikTok. And we've had lots of different perspectives on this issue. And I understand that you certainly have some opinions on that. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not known for having opinions. But Do you want me to show you my TikTok app? Uh, you have TikTok on your phone? No. OK, yeah, me neither. <laughs> me neither yeah. No, well, no, no I'm, I think I'm just, uh, you know, it's just like when Facebook was still popular and then kids had it. And then when mom got on it or dad, it was like, 
they abandoned it for Instagram. And then they abandoned Instagram for TikTok. Yeah. And then once TikTok goes away, there'll be another thing. It's just going to be what's the new thing. We launched this show about five years ago. I did another statewide radio show before that, did a little work in local television, did some work on Capitol Hill, worked for a U.S. senator from Montana. So for about the past 20 years or so, I've, I've either been doing you know, politics or broadcasting or I've been on a military deployment. So this issue of banning TikTok in Montana is quite divisive. We've spoken to people on both sides. Can you just give us an idea of how Montanans have reacted to this ban? I mean, you're a radio host, so you know better than probably the most um, what people's views are. You know, it's, yeah, it's fun having a statewide radio talk show where we take phone calls and we get messages in throughout the show. I would say overwhelmingly, I think Montanans are against uh, what the communist Chinese are doing. We, we, what we've really seen here is to use the triad reference here in Montana, we've got Malmstrom Air Force Base. If you made the drive from here in Billings to Great Falls, Montana, you would literally be driving past nuclear missile silos. You would see them from the road. The communist Chinese, they've been trying to buy farmland near these nuclear missile silo locations. Thankfully, our, our state legislature and governor stepped up to put a ban on that in place. They've been spying on uh, Montanans and Americans through TikTok. But really what we've seen here in Montana is China has this triad of intelligence collection that they're using overhead with a spy balloon on the ground by purchasing land near these military installations and then literally in the pockets of Montanans. To discuss the free speech implications of the ban, I traveled to the state's Capitol building in Helena where I met with Attorney General Austin Knudsen, who is fighting lawsuits brought by TikTokers opposed to the ban's prohibition. That's Lewis and Clark meeting the Flathead. Right now when they film Yellowstone. That, that means is that your favorite show? No. Montana is the first state to ban TikTok. Why? Well, it certainly wasn't a race for us, and it wasn't a matter of us trying to be the first ones. Um, like I said, I, I really think it was kind of a perfect storm of events that led to it, frankly. Uh, our, our investigation uh, through our Office of Consumer Protection. The spy balloon flying over brought a lot of attention to the issue. Uh, I mean, that, that got a lot of people fired up. It got a lot of legislators fired up. Some people, some even conservatives say, and particularly libertarians, that this is an issue of freedom of speech. What would you say to that argument? I would say that there's certainly some freedom of speech implications here. I mean, we, we're not ignorant to that. We certainly crafted this legislation to be mindful of that and mindful of the fact that we were going to get challenged. We, we knew we were going to get sued. National security really is a big part of this discussion. I mean, I'm, I'm a very strong libertarian. I don't like to be told what to do, but I'm also very concerned about our national security and our allies' national security. And then I look at the kind of information that TikTok is gathering from, from Americans and from Montanans. I mean, we're talking about I mean, not got that. Regardless of how we may look at China, China views us as an existential long-term threat. So I, I think we have to look through the lens of this entire argument through that and see why they're trying to collect so much data from Americans and, and, and what are they using it for? The row over TikTok goes to a wider split between Chinese hawks and doves in the West. On the one hand, some believe China is both an economic opportunity and an inevitability. Its size makes it impossible to ignore. Others advocate a decoupling from Beijing, arguing that China is a national security risk. After the spy balloon saga, it's perhaps no surprise that Montana is at the forefront of this new Cold War. However, as lawsuits continue to mount against the ban, there is no certainty it will go ahead. Whatever happens, TikTok will continue to collect data on its users, and no one knows what the outcome of that may be.